Um, Mr. Barnovich, uh, you stated a moment ago that states want to do everything they can to protect their citizens. Would you agree that every single member of Congress should also take whatever steps are necessary to protect their citizens? I believe every member of Congress takes an oath to swear and uphold the Constitution of the United States, and that includes protecting their citizens within their states or districts. And Mr. Jadwat, you defend sanctuary cities under the concept of the Tenth Amendment, which I'm really excited to hear a liberal talk about the importance of the Tenth Amendment. I think we could have a lot more discussions about what we ought to be doing under the Tenth Amendment. But you use the Tenth Amendment claiming that it is an anti-commandeering theory. But isn't that exactly what the Biden administration is doing, is commandeering the resources of Texas and Arizona and every other state in the nation to absorb the costs associated with illegal immigration? So commandeering refers to actually... I want you to answer my question. Well, no, not when under Texas, the legal when definition. Texas, when Texas has to use its resources to absorb the costs associated with illegal immigration, isn't that commandeering? Not within the meaning okay, of the Okay, then I'm not amendment. going to bother with you if you're not going to actually engage on the, on the terminology that you use. Mr. Brnovich, in February 2022, you drafted an attorney general opinion on the federal government's duty to protect the states and the state's sovereign power of self-defense when being invaded. One of the questions you address is what constitutes actually invaded for the state self-defense clause and invasion for the invasion clause. Mr. Bornovich, what do you conclude the scope of invasion means in the Constitution, and does the Constitution's contrasting of invasion with insurrection, rebellion, and domestic violence create a situation where it can be applied to non-state actors? Our opinion lays forth the uh, distinction between uh, domestic insurrections and rebellion versus an actual invasion. If you, if you go back to the Federalist Papers, which were designed during the constitutional ratification, the debate in Federalist 41, Federalist 42, Federalist 43, James Madison set forth clearly that invasion constituted not only state, but non-state actors. And in fact, during the ratification, the, during the Virginia ratification debate, uh, one of the examples um, future President Madison used was the fact that uh, there was um, pirates and smugglers off the coast of Virginia, and that Virginia had a right to defend itself against people that were breaking the law out of the federal government and the federal navy, just you know, non-existent at the time, couldn't do anything that the state of Virginia could. And so, and even a lot of the conversation and the discussion we've had today is about whether states can enforce immigration law. The reality is, is that the federal government, the president has had his or her height of power when it comes to immigration law. However, the courts have never said that, it's, that states do not have the ability to protect themselves, that states do not have the ability to stop or repel uh, an invasion. And if you read our opinion, we lay forth not only the facts, and we've heard so many facts from this Congress about the number of people dying. I mean, my goodness, more than 100,000 Americans dying from fentanyl and drug overdoses. We've seen a spike in Arizona for, in just in the last five or six years from single-digit percentages into above 50% when it comes to those deaths. We've seen a spike in violence. And anybody, I would urge you to come to the southern border. Um, and when you see rape trees uh, where women are being victimized and traumatized by human smugglers and the drug cartels, you will ask yourself, why isn't this Congress, why isn't this administration doing more, not only to protect our citizens here, but also to stop people from being exploited by the cartels and uh, gangs? It's an incredibly inhumane situation that has been created by this administration. Uh, Joshua Trevino of the Texas Public Policy Foundation clarified that invasion means entry plus enmity and the action of modern non-state actors can meet this threshold if they reach a scale where they overthrow or curtail the lawful sovereignty of a state. Mr. Brnovich, you were the Attorney General of Arizona where you served as the Chief Legal and Law Enforcement Officer. Can you speak from your experience about whether the actions of the cartels displace state sovereignty and constitute entry and enmity? Um, as you know, the states are absorbing a cost not only fiscally, but a cost in human treasure as well. Uh, we just talked about the tragic drug overdoses and the drug deaths. We've also seen a spike in violence. If you talk to the sheriffs, not only along our southern border, but sheriffs in places like Pinal County, they will tell you they've seen a dramatic 
increase in the number of car pursuits and car chases, which also are dangerous to our community. And it seems like every day now you see a video of literally cartel members escorting people across our border. So as every day goes on and the administration refuses to act, the cartels are getting more and more powerful. They have made billions, if not trillions of dollars off of the last three years and what's happened. And as a result of that, my worry as an Arizona and as a first generation American is that Mexico is on the brink of becoming a narco state.